Hi everyone. So I want to welcome all of you to the house of our God on a beautiful Sunday morning where we love God and praise God through the loving each other. As you know, today is the fourth and Sunday of Advent. The theme is love, side the hopes and pray the light of love to shine into your life and your whole family and our worship service. So let us share. Let us praise our God with me. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. It's because of your loving kindness, care, and protection that is we are here. Thank you because of gathering us here today for this service. We call on to you to guide this service. Accept all our sacrifice of worship, praise, and prayer. Forgive our sins so that we are accept, acceptable before your presence. Allow your Holy Spirit to be in our midst. As we start this service, may you, as may you our hearts are filled to overflowing with the love for you and for one another. And be glorified from the beginning to the end. Please give us your peace and love that we may be able to listen to you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
became flesh and lived for a while among us, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. <laughs>
Amen, amen. Welcome. Join with me now, if you would, in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This morning's Old Testament reading is found in Isaiah 7, verses 1 through 10. Full disclosure, I had to listen to a version of this because there's many, many words that are a little tricky. So bear with me. I'm going to just go through this. Thumbs up. Okay? However it's pronounced is how it's pronounced. Here we go. It's the sign of Emmanuel. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, the king of Judah, King Rezin of Aram and Pekah, son of Remelah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied, allied itself with Ephraim, so the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken, as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out, you and your son, share Jasub, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the launderer's field. Say to him, Be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and the son of Remaliah. Aram, Ephraim, and Remaliah's son have plotted your ruin, saying, Let us invade Judah. Let us tear it apart and divide it among ourselves and make the son of Tabeel king over it. Yet, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only resin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Remelah's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Our New Testament reading is found in Matthew, whew, chapter 1, and it's verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home to be his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to his reading and listening to his word this morning. 
And now our music, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Thank you. I've been listening to Christmas music uh, since about maybe Halloween, definitely before Thanksgiving. But it's not as powerful as, as getting the vibration and the reverberations and sitting in the house of the Lord to hear the versions that touch your heart. Amen. So welcome here, our fourth Sunday of Advent. We've been preparing and just anticipating the arrival of that babe in a manger so welcome to all of you, and welcome back to some of you um, to come up north for our, our snow event. And how about that snow day to give us a three-day weekend? All of us in the schools are very thankful for that. So again, we warmly welcome you here this morning um, as we come and, 
and just um, gather together to worship his name. Amen. We'd love to hear any joys, any prayer requests that you may have this morning, any updates on prayers, anything this morning. I know Sheila's busy upstairs, so I'm going to steal her thunder. Uh, our food bank started this week downstairs on Thursday night, that snowy, terrible night. We had six families come out. Yesterday, we had 19. So that's a total of 25 families that we supplied food for this coming weekend. And I, I just think that that's pretty phenomenal for a church our size. This Tuesday, we've got another shipment coming in. Uh, we could use some extra hands to unload. So uh, Sheila will let us know what time it is. Thank you. What a great, great update to know that 25 families will now have food on the table for Christmas and one burden off of all the bills that they're paying. Um, they come and all of this food is free to them. So what a wonderful outreach and ministry and service to our community. Any others? I want to share a joy we all have, the joy of this season of Christmas. And my thoughts had turned to some words that uh, C.S. Lewis had said, and my aging memory will sort of filter through that so you won't get the true version. He said, the two most world-impacting events in history are the incarnation, when the creator became one of his creation. The second, of course, is the death and resurrection of that same person who came incarnate as an incarnate being to provide those of us with salvation. Thank you. And I'll just draw your attention to our, our prayer list and the names listed there. Um, each person, each situation, um, God knows and, and will be continuing to work in the hearts of those on our, on our prayer list. Um, we look forward to our Christmas Eve service, Saturday at 6.30, and then next Sunday, it's a combined service with our sister Wesley Church, and the service will be here at 10 a.m., so if you're interested in coming, note the time change and be here uh, for service at 10 All right, let us join. Yes, sir. All right, just in the nick of time. <laughs> Spoke with Glenn. Spoke with Glenn Godoy, Godoy on the phone a couple nights ago. Uh, some of you know that we've been praying for his daughter, Jessie. Well, she is blind now completely, and um, we need to continually pray not only for Jesse that things might work out, but for Glenn and Claudia is a great burden which they're taking on so graciously with God's help. But uh, it's a pretty amazing situation that they're having to go through. And they moved down to Virginia Beach, whenever it was last year or whatever. They never planned on this in their lives. But Glenn, as usual, is upbeat and trusting the Lord that they will be able to care for Jesse, who is living with them now. Um, so please continue to pray. I think we can all, all sing for joy that Bob and Lois and uh, Christy also flew up from the warm land of Florida <laughs> to be here with their family before Christmas. So glad you're here. Always All right, hearing none others, let's take a moment to just
um, sit quietly in the Lord and, and speak to him, and then we'll have our prayer and we'll close uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Let's quiet our hearts and minds. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. As we gather here as recipients of his love and his grace and his mercy, we gather together to worship him, the one who sent down the best and greatest gift of love, Jesus incarnate. Jesus, who is fully God and fully man, came that he may walk here on earth and feel all the feelings that we do and go through trials and temptations and live sinless and yet came that he would take that journey to the cross for each one of us so that we may be forgiven that we may spend eternity with him in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you for this gift of love that was bestowed for each one of us. Thank you that we can prepare our hearts and minds and homes to welcome this babe and to extend that love to others through our food pantry and those in the community that have come, that we can extend that love to neighbors and friends, and co-workers, and family members, and church members. Thank you that you filled us so much with your immeasurable love and goodness that we can't help but share it and to spread it like the light of our Advent candles, getting brighter each week so that there is more light and that we are keeping out the darkness. Heavenly Father, we come to you with such praise and thanksgiving, mindful of those on the prayer list, mindful of each name, each situation, each diagnosis, each um, hardship. We lift each one to you now, that your hand may be upon them, that your goodness and grace will just pour over them. We especially lift to you Bob Holmes. We're so grateful he's here. Grateful for the time spent with family and traveling mercies for Christy. May we all just uh, appreciate the time that we do have with our family and loved ones, especially during this season, that you would be in all of the um, festivities and fellowship and greetings especially in those families that this is a difficult time of year and it's not one of peace, but rather it's, there's uh, relationships that are difficult, there are family life, there are situations that are difficult, and we're mindful of those. We're mindful of those that are in a season of mourning and grieving and that it's more of a blue Christmas and it's perhaps more somber or sad but we can just rejoice knowing that the loved ones are spending their first Christmas with you. We lift those families up that have heavy hearts this morning. Heavenly Father, we lift to you Jesse and Glenn and Claudia and the entire family. Hearing this news, it's, it's so difficult to wrap our heads around, just a loss of vision, a loss of independence. But Heavenly Father, we know that you will be in their midst and you will comfort them and strengthen them and help them to overcome the challenges that life will um, portray for quite some time. For we know that you will guide them on the path towards um, a deeper trust and a deeper understanding of your goodness. We lift to you Jessie now and all that she 
personally is, is feeling and the challenges that she's facing. May she feel your love. May she feel the love and support from here and help her to face each day with renewed strength. Heavenly Father, we're um, so thankful for Pastor Jay and his family. We ask that you put a special hedge of protection around them to keep them healthy this time of year. Thank you for the message that he has prepared today. We look forward to the Christmas Eve celebration and just celebrating the love and the family that we have here. Thank you for Pastor Jay's um, always warm hug and his warmness and these messages that just touch us and give us something to ponder on throughout the whole week. And we come back yearning to learn more and hear more of what he has to share that you've laid on his heart. Heavenly Father, we lift our church to you and all of the ministries and outreaches. Thank you for this group of dedicated women who come before you week after week, pouring themselves into prayer on all of our behalfs. They come knowing that um, time with you is so precious, and they carve that time each and every week to spend with you. Thank you for their devotion and their faithfulness. May we learn from them in carving time out to spend with you in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful that we can celebrate this Advent, knowing the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that comes from you. May you magnify the love in us and within us that we can share it this week and that people will know that babe in the manger came and that they are loved. And now as, a, as, a, uh, as we share our love, let's share now uh, the, Lord, the prayer that you have taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now if you're able and comfortable to do so, please stand and join with us And Love Has Come Down. serious. Thank you. Once more, I would like to say thank you all of you, especially new visitor and visitor and the people who are attending this worship service for a while. <laughs> it's welcome to the home, your home church. And also watching YouTube and Facebook, wherever you are, we are so glad that you are here to be with us and to join our worship service today. 
And today's message comes from Matthew chapter verse 1 through 10. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the, Jew, King of the Jews? We saw his star is when he rose and have come to worship him. It's when the King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. It's when he had called together all the people's chiefs, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search it carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. It's when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just come before you, having heard the scripture. We ask the Lord that we might hear and understand. I pray that as we heard this story, we might hear something new, that you might open our eyes to understand more fully. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be worthy in front of you, my God. May you receive all glory and honor. Amen. Christmas has come. It's one of the things that comes to your mind during this season. And are there certain things that make you think of Christmas? Do you have? It always reminds me of the moments I spent playing with my friends is when I was young. And there was a time is when we are putting on a church Christmas play. And we argued about who got to play the main role of Joseph and Mary. It was one of the main characters that had the most lines and got to wear the fanciest clothes. On the other hand, for the role of the wise man, you had to stand still for a long time back then. <laughs> and you had to wear worn-out clothes while acting tired. They didn't get too many lines either. I didn't seem too much of a big role. However, my teacher wanted me to play the role of one of the wise men. The teacher would try to come for me by saying that it was way better than playing a sheep in the back. <laughs> okay. Few times, I even asked the teacher if I could switch my role to something else. The teacher would always say yes. However, the next day, I would come in to see that my role had only change it to the wise man number two. <laughs> Eventually, during my and three years in my middle school, I played the roles of wise man number one, and second year, wise man number two, and wise man number three. <laughs> my teacher told me the following. 
the role of the wise man is very important for Christmas. I didn't realize it at the time, but as the number of Christmas I've spent in my life increased, I've started to slowly understand what the teacher meant. We must not underestimate Christmas. It's whether you celebrate Christmas in a special or a non-special manner, the one thing that we can all agree on is that as we've heard so much about the birth of Jesus Christ. According to the gospel, to the point that we may have become number to it. It's the same thing as habitually and repeatedly saying Merry Christmas to each other during the Christmas season, right? However, I'm not saying that because Christmas is so familiar to us that it should be taken lightly and insignificantly. On the contrary, I'm saying that we should realize its most precious values and meanings. It's because Christmas is a much greater and important day than as we can imagine. Merry Christmas is more than just a greeting. It signifies the true meaning and value of Christmas. But actually, there's a growing concern about we just continually share this message, uh, Christmas series, I call in my personal expression, expression. Did you remember what was the first? What was the first message with title? Blue Christmas. Second, white Christmas. But as someone asked me, what is different? Uh, happy Christmas and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Well, actually, I got this message for the following after previous names, not having no any seriously thinking about the message. But anyway, it's once I look at them and it's prepared this summer, I got this really big realization because Merry Christmas have an including really beautiful and it's meaningful and meaning. In the name of Merry Christmas. Like I said, Christmas is more than just a greeting. It signifies the true meaning and value of Christmas. Merry Christmas, the greeting, Merry Christmas, is a combination of merrily, meaning joyful. And the Christmas, which is a joy world coming from Christ and Mass, meaning worship. So, put together, a Merry Christmas signifies joyfully giving worship to who? Jesus Christ. In today's scripture, we can see this in more detail. This is what it says. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star is when he rose and have come to worship him. Personally, I'm wondering if there is any more accurate scripture verses that tells us what we must realize and do during this season of Christmas as we wait for Jesus Christ. It's because the wise men endured the long, hard, and dangerous journey to worship baby Jesus, showing much self-sacrifice, humanity, and dedication. Most people generally find the joy in self satisfaction, self-love, pride, and pleasure rather than in joy of self-sacrifice, humility, and dedication. The most representative of these souls comes from money 
position, success, and beauty. And those people fall, pray, search for self-fulfillment, self-satisfaction, and self-pride, and they worship it. As a result, rather than joyfully praising God or having a Merry Christmas, we end up praising ourselves and having a Merry Ourselves instead of Merry Christmas. In other words, we end up praising our own idols that we have created. But this cannot give us the true joy or life. Rather, they give us more uneasiness. The idea that love and recognition are gained from main, main from wealth, power, ability, and status makes the people more and more anxious because of the idea that whenever these things disappear, people will no longer be loved. However, let's think about it. Where we learn about true love from? First, it's from our God who unconditionally acknowledges and loves our existence itself. But it will be a very hard for us to discover that kind of love on this planet. Fortunately, on this earth, however, parental love is relatively close to that love. So we could say that we first learned about it from our parents. That's why unless people feel this love, we always feel a lack of love. And we are always anxious to feel it up. Unfortunately, however, we can't feel the same love anyone else and anywhere else in this world, except for Jesus Christ and his love. In modern society, however, such deficiency is associated with the material goods so much. They try to fill up their emotional anxieties through material rewards to the accusation of material goods. It is not the material goods we want. It is the reward we want. That is a new way of looking at luxury goods. So, next time, we see somebody driving a luxury car like a Ferrari. Don't think that this is somebody who is greedy or envious, but think this is somebody who is incredibly vulnerable and in need of love, right? That means we must change our way of looking at people who drive luxury cars and carry around the luxury goods differently. We don't need to look at them and see them and be greedy or nervous or envious, but as vulnerable and the deficient in love. Take a look at Solomon. It's when he lost the hold of worship. In other words, when his love and his joy for God disappeared, he tried to fill out his emptiness with many material goods and wives, 700, no, <laughs> 700, I can't imagine, but anyway, I'm still very hard for me to live with, with one. <laughs> However, his conclusion was that everything is meaningless. It says the teacher completely meaningless. So having a Merry Christmas is the only way to fill up this lack of love. It's the chance to meet our true love who sacrificed his life unconditionally for us to save us. Thus, when we worship Jesus Christ, we can feel and recovery true joy. 
Let's take a look at the following verse. 10 is when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Amen? It say that they were overjoyed. It's because the true king, they could worship was here. And being able to worship that Jesus Christ or joyfully praising the king was having a Merry Christmas itself. It's because through that alone, they were able to receive salvation, peace, and eternal life. The principle of representation. However, we are so used to the object of worship, we created ourselves that is we don't realize the object of true worship. We question ourselves, how on earth can a child of Jesus Christ forgive and save the sins of so many people in this world? I want to say this. If that is so, it's where does it come from that is we are sinners? It's not other than from Adam's sin. Then it is also right that forgiveness and salvation for sin are from one person. Look at the verse 1. Adam sinned, and that sin brought death into the world. Now everyone has sinned, and so everyone must die. Yet death still had the power of all who lived from the time to Adam to the time of Moses. This happened, and those not everyone disobeyed the direct command from God, as Adam did, Everyone was going to be punished because Adam sinned, but because of the good thing that Christ has done, God accepts us and gives us the gift of life. Adam disobeyed God and caused many others to be sinned, sinners, but Jesus obeyed him and will, makes, will make many people acceptable to God. Rome chapter 5, 12 verse 19. The principle is similar to as follows. Uh, the World Cup. Uh, for me, the football is always a soccer, not American football. The World Cup is a crime ongoing. The soccer players from each country play each round and prepare for the next match. The winning team is joyful, right? However, the losing team gets very sad. But let's think about it. Let's look at the one. Let's say that our country and our our country and not just the players individually win a soccer place or a national competition. This is a principle of representation, right? Therefore, they can truly be happy. And through that, we can understand the true meaning of Merry Christmas. During this season, we love and remember the story of Charles Dickens' scourge. There is one thing in particular that we must keep in mind. Scourge was someone who would return to an empty home, shrugging over Christmas, thinking it was meaningless. He realized the true meaning of Christmas and wakes up to the dream once he seeks forgiveness. Do you remember? It's what the first thing he said to the child is, as a changed man. Do you remember? It was, Merry Christmas. Christmas is a day we realize who is the king worthy of our true praise. It means that we give him our true praise. We can have the opportunity to enjoy salvation and true joy, like Scrooge did. This is the reason that we must not simply look over Christmas. I hope that we do not lose hold of these chances this Christmas. Moreover, I hope we can all confess that the true meaning of having a 
Merry Christmas. Amen. Now, if you are the let us stand if you are able and go to the, our final hymn together. Let us pray. Let's worship our Lord who came as the one truly worthy of our true praise and receive with true salvation and joy through him. Would you guide us to praise the Lord who is our true praise and help us to spread Merry Christmas to every around us this season. And God's people say, Amen.